She was certainly not your dumb blonde at all. She's a very bright, sensitive girl. Jane Russell is not only one of the most seductive symbols of old Hollywood, but also an important witness to the sudden death of her close friend, Marilyn Monroe. It cannot be denied that Jane is a charming girl, possessing impressive curves that attract the attention of many men. But luckiest of all was that she was paired with Marilyn Monroe, who is known for her roles as the comic book character Blonde Blonde. Their friendship gained even more attention after Marilyn's unexpected death, and what Jane revealed sent shivers down fans' spine. Don't miss this video as we will reveal the truth that Jane Russell tried to hide from Marilyn Monroe. Jane Russell's journey from a tomboyish upbringing to Hollywood stardom is a tale of determination, talent, and a touch of serendipity. Born as Ernestine Jane Geraldine Russell on June 21, 1921, in Minnesota, she was the eldest child and only daughter among five siblings. Growing up in a household dominated by her four brothers, Jane quickly adapted to a tomboy lifestyle, embracing activities and interests traditionally associated with boys. Her family background laid the foundation for her resilience and ambition. Her father, a former first lieutenant in the U.S. Army, instilled in her a sense of discipline and duty, while her mother's background in performing arts sparked an early interest in entertainment. Russell's mother had once been part of a traveling review, exposing Jane to the world of show business from a young age. In 1930, the family relocated to the vibrant landscape of the San Fernando Valley in California, where opportunities in the burgeoning entertainment industry loomed large. Jane's father found work as a manager at a soap manufacturing factory, contributing to the family's livelihood while also exposing Jane to the realities of the working world. It was during her formative years at Van Nuys High School that Jane's passion for drama began to take shape. Encouraged by her mother, she embarked on piano lessons, expanding her artistic horizons while honing her skills in performing arts. The bustling atmosphere of California, with its proximity to Hollywood, provided fertile ground for young talents like Jane Russell to flourish. While her initial foray into entertainment began with piano lessons, it was her burgeoning interest in drama that would ultimately pave the way for her ascent to stardom. The allure of the stage and screen beckoned, offering Jane a glimpse into a world where her dreams could take flight. As she immersed herself in the realm of drama, Jane Russell's talent and charisma began to shine. Her natural ability to captivate audiences soon caught the attention of industry insiders, propelling her toward opportunities that would redefine her future. Jane Russell's journey took a significant turn following the unexpected death of her father at the young age of 46. This profound loss forced her to reconsider her plans and aspirations, redirecting her path toward a future she hadn't envisioned. Despite her initial intention to pursue a career in design, the untimely demise of her father prompted Jane to reassess her priorities. After graduating from high school, she found herself thrust into the role of a receptionist, navigating the complexities of adulthood while grappling with grief. Yet, even amidst the challenges she faced, Jane's resilience and determination remained unwavering. Inspired by her mother's guidance, she ventured into the world of modeling, seizing opportunities to showcase her natural beauty and charisma. It was a path she pursued not only out of necessity, but also as a means of honoring her mother's advice. In a fortuitous twist of fate, Jane Russell's journey intersected with the legendary Max Reinhardt's theatrical workshop, a renowned institution that nurtured aspiring talents in the performing arts. Under the tutelage of esteemed actress Marie Uspenskaya, Jane found herself immersed in a world of creativity and expression, honing her craft and expanding her artistic horizons. However, Fate had more surprises in store for Jane, as her association with the theater world led to an unexpected encounter with another iconic figure, Marilyn Monroe. In 1952, Marilyn stumbled upon Reinhardt's manuscripts, intended as a gift for her own instructor, Natasha Lites. 
This discovery sparked a media frenzy, with Marilyn facing heavy criticism for her actions. Eventually, under the weight of public scrutiny, she agreed to sell the archive back to Reinhardt's son at cost. Yet, the story didn't end there. In a twist worthy of a Hollywood screenplay, Reinhardt's son seized the opportunity to turn a profit, reselling the entire collection to a university. In doing so, he not only secured a sizable financial gain, but also unwittingly contributed to preserving a piece of theatrical history for future generations. In 1940, Jane Russell's trajectory in Hollywood took a momentous turn when she inked a seven-year contract crafted by the enigmatic Howard Hughes, a man whose eccentricities rivaled his successes as the CEO of Transworld Airlines. Hughes, known for his reclusive nature and forays into film production, with notable works like Hell's Angels, The Front Page, and Scarface, was captivated by the 19-year-old Jane's striking physique. Under Hugh's wing, Jane found herself thrust into the spotlight, poised for stardom in a manner both unexpected and exhilarating. Hughes, renowned for his creative vision and unorthodox methods, cast Jane in The Outlaw, a Western opus that bore the imprint of his singular genius. Penned by Hughes himself, the film promised to be a departure from the conventional Western fare, infused with a provocative allure that mirrored its creator's unbridled imagination. In The Outlaw, Jane assumed the role of Rio, a character whose beauty ensnared the affections of both Doc Holliday and Billy the Kid, two legendary figures of the Wild West. Hughes, recognizing Jane's allure as a potent asset, sought to enhance her allure further, devising a controversial solution in the form of a protruding bra designed to accentuate her curves. However, Jane, steadfast in her convictions, staunchly refused to comply with Hugis' unconventional demands, asserting her agency and refusing to compromise her principles for the sake of spectacle. Undeterred by Jane's refusal, Hughes orchestrated a now infamous photo shoot that would forever alter the course of Jane Russell's career. Captured in a series of iconic images, Jane's timeless beauty and magnetic presence captivated audiences, transforming her into an enduring symbol of allure and sophistication. These images, immortalized as pinups, became emblematic of an era defined by resilience and resilience amidst the tumult of World War II. Yet, despite the initial allure and anticipation surrounding the outlaw, the film soon found itself embroiled in controversy, drawing the ire of censors and moral guardians alike. Hughes, undeterred by the backlash, dedicated the next five years to refining and editing his opus, determined to navigate the turbulent waters of public opinion and secure a release that would do justice to his vision. Howard Hughes's reputation as a powerful and enigmatic figure in Hollywood was matched only by his notorious reputation for his insatiable sexual appetite. Yet Jane Russell refused to become just another conquest in his long list of dalliances. Despite the allure of his advances, Jane remained steadfast in her resolve, determined not to succumb to his charms. One evening, when Hughes extended an invitation to his quarters, Jane made her intentions clear. She demanded that he keep his hands to himself. This bold stance spoke volumes about Jane's strength of character and her unwillingness to compromise her principles for the sake of fleeting pleasures. In a twist of fate, Jane found love and companionship in the arms of NFL football player Bob Waterfield, whom she married in 1943. Their union symbolized a departure from the superficial allure of Hollywood grounding Jane in a relationship built on mutual respect and genuine affection. However, the intricacies of Hollywood's social scene would soon intersect with Jane's life in unexpected ways. In her 1989 memoir, Marilyn Monroe and the Camera, Jane recounted a memorable encounter with the legendary Marilyn Monroe. It was at a dance where Jane found herself face-to-face -face with Jim Doherty, Monroe's husband at the time.
Doherty, adorned in a police uniform, beckoned Jane over to introduce her to his wife, then known as Norma Jean. In that fleeting moment, Jane observed Monroe curled up over Doherty's arm, a scene that struck her with a mixture of curiosity and discomfort. It was an awkward encounter, one that left an indelible impression on Jane's memory, serving as a poignant reminder of the complexities and contradictions inherent in the world of fame and fortune. The outlaw catapulted Jane Russell into the stratosphere of stardom, but it also tethered her to a contractual web spun by the enigmatic Howard Hughes. Despite the film's success, Hughes's ironclad grip over Jane's career meant that she was effectively sidelined from further cinematic endeavors until his meticulous approval process was satisfied by the censors. This constraint imposed upon Jane not only stifled her creative freedom, but also placed her in the uncomfortable position of being a pawn in Hughes's grand scheme of publicity and promotion. Hughes's expectations extended far beyond the confines of the silver screen. He demanded Jane's unwavering commitment to the relentless promotion of The Outlaw, long before its release had been confirmed. This relentless pressure left Jane with little room to maneuver, as she found herself ensnared in a web of contractual obligations and logistical constraints. Amidst this tumultuous period, Jane managed to secure a fleeting reprieve from Hughes's grasp, appearing in the 1946 film Young Widow. However, this brief respite was overshadowed by the looming specter of Hughes's influence, which continued to exert a stranglehold over Jane's burgeoning career. In 1947, Jane ventured into the realm of musical entertainment, showcasing her versatility and talent in a departure from the cinematic world. Yet, her heart remained tethered to the silver screen, and in 1953, she made a triumphant return to film, joining forces with another sought-after Hollywood bombshell, Marilyn Monroe. The year 1953 marked a momentous occasion in Hollywood history as two of its most iconic leading ladies, Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe, graced the silver screen together in the timeless classic, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Their on-screen chemistry was nothing short of mesmerizing, captivating audiences worldwide with their infectious energy and undeniable talent. Yet, behind the scenes, their friendship blossomed into a bond that transcended the superficialities of fame and fortune. Despite their contrasting personas and backgrounds, Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe forged a deep and lasting connection that defied the expectations of Hollywood. Their friendship, rooted in mutual respect and admiration, provided solace and support amidst the whirlwind of stardom. The genesis of their friendship can be traced back to Marilyn's first husband, Jim Doggerty, who had attended high school with Jane Russell. It was through this serendipitous connection that Jane and Marilyn were first introduced, laying the foundation for a friendship that would endure the tests of time. Initially, Jane Russell was captivated by Marilyn's ethereal beauty, her radiant presence casting a spell that left an indelible impression on those around her. Yet, as their friendship deepened, Jane soon discovered that beneath Marilyn's glamorous exterior lay a woman of remarkable sensitivity and vulnerability. Marilyn Monroe's delicate demeanor and shy disposition stood in stark contrast to her bombshell image, revealing a complex and multifaceted individual grappling with the pressures of fame and scrutiny. It was this vulnerability that endeared Marilyn to Jane, fostering a sense of empathy and understanding between the two women. One poignant incident that underscored Marilyn's vulnerability occurred during the filming of a kissing scene with actor Tommy Noonan. Overhearing a group of men inquire about the experience of kissing Marilyn, Noonan's response, comparing it to being swallowed alive, struck a nerve with Marilyn, prompting her to retreat to her dressing room in tears. Witnessing Marilyn's emotional reaction, Jane Russell was reminded of the insensitivity that often pervaded the male-dominated world of Hollywood, suspecting that Marilyn may not have developed the same resilience growing up. 
As they embarked on their cinematic journey together in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Jane and Marilyn showcased a chemistry that transcended the confines of the silver screen, capturing the hearts and imaginations of audiences worldwide. Yet, behind the glamour and glitz, their friendship remained a steadfast source of support and understanding, offering a sanctuary amidst the pressures of stardom. In the years that followed, Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe would carve out distinct legacies in Hollywood, each leaving an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. While their fates ultimately diverged, their friendship endured as a testament to the transformative power of connection and compassion in an industry often defined by its superficialities. In the wake of Marilyn Monroe's tragic demise, a cloud of suspicion and intrigue descended upon Hollywood, shrouding her death in a veil of uncertainty. According to Jane Russell, Monroe's close friend and confidant, there were compelling reasons to doubt the official narrative surrounding her passing. In the months leading up to her death, Monroe had been making plans for the future that seemed incongruous with the notion of suicide. Russell revealed that Monroe had been on the brink of marrying baseball legend Joe DiMaggio and had secured a fresh new movie contract, suggesting that she had much to live for. These details, when considered in tandem, led Russell to the firm conviction that Monroe's death was not a result of her own actions, but rather a sinister act perpetrated by others. Russell harbored deep suspicions regarding the circumstances surrounding Monroe's demise, believing that foul play was involved. She spoke of dirty tricks and insinuated that powerful forces were at play behind the scenes. In particular, Russell pointed fingers at Jack and Bobby Kennedy, both of whom had been romantically linked to Monroe. The tangled web of relationships and power dynamics that characterized Monroe's life hinted at a darker truth lurking beneath the surface. Russell's assertions implied that Monroe's connections to the Kennedy brothers may have played a pivotal role in her untimely demise, fueling speculation and conspiracy theories that continue to captivate imaginations to this day. Shortly after Monroe's death, Jane Russell found herself face to face with Bobby Kennedy, an encounter that left an indelible mark on her psyche. She recounted the moment with a sense of unease, describing how Kennedy's gaze seemed to convey a message of hostility and intimidation. However, Russell refused to be cowed by his presence, standing firm in her convictions and refusing to back down. Throughout her life, Jane Russell fiercely guarded the privacy of her personal relationships, deflecting inquiries about her romantic entanglements with a deft touch. Despite persistent rumors, she adamantly denied any romantic involvement with Howard Hughes, the enigmatic billionaire who had wielded significant influence over her career. Similarly, when pressed about her relationship with Frank Sinatra, Russell remained tight-lipped, refusing to divulge details of their rumored affair. Her discretion only fueled speculation among the tabloids and Hollywood gossip circles, perpetuating the mystique surrounding her love life. However, there were instances where Russell displayed a surprising openness about her friendships and associations. She maintained a close bond with Liza Minnelli, the iconic entertainer and daughter of Judy Garland. Their friendship was marked by moments of joy and camaraderie, including Russell's attendance at Minnelli's lavish lavash, 2002 wedding, to David Guest. Yet, Russell's loyalty was put to the test when Minnelli's marriage to Guest ended in a bitter divorce. Despite her fondness for Minnelli, Russell ultimately sided with Guest, a decision that underscored her commitment to standing by those she believed to be in the right, even in the face of adversity. In matters of love and loss, Jane Russell's life was not without its share of heartache. Her third husband, John Peoples, a real estate professional, passed away in 1999 after a 25-year marriage. Devastated by his loss, Russell found solace in alcohol, turning to it as a means of coping with her grief. However, what began as a source of comfort soon spiraled into a full-blown addiction. Russell's struggle with alcoholism became increasingly apparent, prompting her to seek help at the age of 79. 
Despite the challenges she faced, Russell approached her recovery with determination and resolve, embarking on a 30-day stint in rehab that would ultimately change the course of her life. The unexpected death of Roger Barrett, Jane Russell's second husband, just three months after their wedding in August 1968, plunged her into a state of profound grief. Barrett's sudden passing, attributed to a heart attack, struck Russell with a devastating blow, leaving her grappling with the overwhelming weight of loss. Reflecting on this painful chapter in her life, Russell would later describe Barrett's death as the worst moment she had ever endured. Russell's marriage to Roger Barrett came in the wake of her quarter-century-long union with her first husband, Robert Waterfield. Their relationship had been one of enduring love and commitment, spanning over two decades. However, the allure of new romance beckoned, leading Russell down a path fraught with complexities and moral dilemmas. Russell's connection with Roger Barrett had deep roots that stretched back to their childhood. Even in their youth, they harbored mutual crushes on each other, laying the groundwork for a romance that would blossom many years later. Despite the forbidden nature of their feelings, Russell and Barrett found themselves drawn inexorably to each other, unable to resist the pull of their shared passion. As their relationship developed, Russell found herself torn between loyalty to her first husband and the magnetic pull of her burgeoning romance with Barrett. Eventually, she succumbed to the allure of forbidden love, engaging in an affair with Barrett while still married to Waterfield. The revelation of Russell's infidelity would cast a shadow over her marriage to Waterfield, testing the bonds of trust and fidelity that had sustained them for so many years. Despite Russell's admission, Waterfield vehemently denied any wrongdoing on his part, insisting that he had always remained faithful to her. The revelation of her husband's infidelity shattered the foundation of trust upon which Jane Russell's marriage to Robert Waterfield had been built. Despite Waterfield's vehement denials and claims of fidelity, Russell discovered that he too had been engaging in an extramarital affair, further deepening the wounds of betrayal. Devastated by this discovery, Russell made the difficult decision to end their marriage, severing ties with the man she had once loved and trusted implicitly. The dissolution of her marriage to Waterfield marked a turning point in Russell's life, leading her to confront the painful realities of her past and forge a new path forward. It was during this tumultuous period that Russell's maternal instincts and desire to build a family took precedence. Russell and Waterfield's shared desire for children led them to embark on the journey of adoption, a decision that would forever change the course of their lives. Over the years, they welcomed three children into their home, providing them with love, stability, and a sense of belonging. For Russell, the experience of motherhood brought profound joy and fulfillment, filling the void left by her own struggles with infertility. Russell's journey to parenthood was marked by a profound sense of gratitude and purpose as she reflected on the life-threatening ordeal she had endured as a young woman. At the tender age of 18, Russell had undergone a botched abortion that had nearly cost her life and left her unable to conceive naturally. Yet from the depths of despair, Russell emerged with a newfound appreciation for the precious gift of motherhood. Driven by her own experiences and a deep-seated desire to make a difference in the lives of children around the world, Russell devoted the last four decades of her life to the cause of Adoptione. In 1967, she founded the World Adoption International Fund, an organization dedicated to facilitating the adoption of children and providing support to families in need. What do you think about Jane Russell's revelations about her close friend Marilyn Monroe? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.